Alcorn State University, Lorman, Mississippi, 39096 on this beautiful Monday. We have another edition of the Fred McNair Radio Program. Coming up, we'll talk all about the Braves' 24-12 win over Mississippi Valley at rice Totten Stadium. We'll break it all down for you, and of course, you can join the conversation. 601 877 6595. You can text a question 601 348 7254. I'm on Twitter, Tall Man Radio, so you can text and or tweet a question. Bray's offense was efficient enough. The defense was really solid. And uh, Valley had a pretty good kicker. We'll talk all about it. We'll have the SWAC report, and we'll look at another freshman quarterback that we'll be looking at on Saturday as Texas Southern, the next opponent for the Braves. TSU lost to Grambling on Grambling's homecoming this past Saturday. So a lot to unpack. We'll get to it all coming up after this timeout here on the Braves Sports Network. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Whether it's advice on managing your anxiety or tools to help you stay grounded, Coping 19 provides a range of resources and self-care tips to help you cope with this pandemic. We can help. Find the resources that work best for you at coping-19.org. Hello, everyone. Glad you can join us here on the Brave Sports Network here on this Monday night. Glad you can join us. Braves head football coach Fred McNair and the Fred McNair program as we get ready for Texas Southern and we'll recap the Mississippi Valley State game on Saturday. A tough one. Good crowd. Great turnout. Good weather and a good end result as the Braves won 24 to 12. Of course, you can join the conversation 601 877 6595. You can text a question 601 348 7254. And you can tweet a question. I'm on Twitter, Tall Man Radio. Braves at football coach Fred McNair. Coach McNair, congratulations, man. Uh, that was a good one. It was a tough one. And uh, you would expect nothing less. No, nah, nothing less, Charles. Um, I thought that uh, we came out and played solid football. Um, but, you know, a Mississippi Valley team, it was tough. Uh, they came out um, very excited about playing. Um, they played tough. Coach Danzy always had those guys ready to play, Charles. And, and we were expecting that other team, um, knowing it was going to be a battle uh, between the trenches. And, um, and that's what it was, Charles. Uh, defense played tough, and offense played uh, good enough to put up 24 points and uh, and uh, win the ball game. So um, pretty much satisfied with the win. Uh, we still got some stuff we got to work on and try and get people back healthy too, Charles. We missing out a lot of guys that that's um, that's not healthy too as well. So um, looking forward to this week uh, going to Texas Southern and and um, looking forward to another. I'm gonna call it. It's not on the road because our fans show up, Charles. <laughs> our fans show up, man. and um, Especially in Houston. Yes, and um, it'll be another home game for us, I can say. <laughs> you know, because our crowd, they're they there with us. And um, and I can't say enough about how they uh, bring the energy to the players when they when they, when they they understand. So I really appreciate the, the alumni, the fans, and their support of uh, these student athletes here at Alcorn State. Well, I tell you what, you know, when you look at Coach Dancy, and we'll talk about that embrace after the game between you and Coach, because I thought that it was pretty long, and, uh, you know, I, we'll, we'll kind of get into that, but we knew it was going to be a tough game. And for those who might not know, uh, Coach Dancy played his college football at Jackson State. He was a defensive guy at Jackson State, obviously. And you clearly see that his team coach kind of mirrors – him in terms of the type of coach he is and what he stresses defense. I mean, you look at the last two and a half games, second half against Southern, North Carolina Central, Bethune-Cookman, the defense is what stepped up and kept them in it against Southern. And, of course, the defense kept them in it, and they beat Central, and they obviously beat Bethune. So clearly their identity is, is their defense. And, and it was it was tough sledding there. 
It was, Charles, and like I said, uh, Delhi is a defense. They take a lot out of Coach Danzy, uh, the way he played, uh, and the way he relied on the defense to, to make plays. And uh, offense just keep him in the ball game, keep it close, and the defense going um, to win it for him. And that's where that's his attitude, and uh, that's the way he approached the game. And I think that this weekend uh, was, a, was, a, was a prime example of uh, what he can do on defense. And uh, did a lot of great things to uh, to to stop us is in some of the scenarios what we had going on offensively. So, um, like I said, he's a great guy, great guy. We got a good relationship, me and him, and, um, you know, we talk a lot. And, uh, you know, just the conversation that we have uh, during the course of our visits with each other, it means a lot to him as well as me. We'll be taking your questions, your comments, your texts and tweets. That's come in. So we'll get to all that as we roll along here. All right, let's get it started here, coaches. We recap the action. One of the toss took the football in the first play of the game, coach, a fumble, which could have been disaster. We recovered the football, but it was second and 29 after the first play of the game. Talk about what didn't happen there. We didn't have, we didn't get the snap right. We didn't get the handoff, and so the miss point was was kind of um, bossed up a little bit. Uh, we didn't get a chance to hand the ball off to where it needed to go. Uh, so we fumbled the ball, and like I said, we always want to start fast and and not really start behind the change, um, as we always say. But the first play for scrimmage was a total disaster, um, which is, which they changed from the uh, quarterback to the receiver. How would you characterize those type of handoffs for the most part this season? Because we had put it, we have put it on the ground in those type of situations. I know you work quarterback, center, back, kind of work on those type of exchanges. How would you uh, characterize how we're handling that with all those exchanges this season? Well, it's always tough when you when you miss point. You work on it in practice. Uh, the timing of it in practice is going to be totally different during the course of a game, uh, the speed of it. So, um, you know, right then, I think the, we didn't get to snap uh, quick enough to get the handoff, and that would cause the miss point to be a total disaster. You know, I think that at one point the receiver could have just caught the ball and, and not get the snap from the quarterback, so um, uh, get the handoff from the quarterback. But, you know, some they work on all, all the time, Charles, with the miss point and all that stuff. So um, we kind of screwed it up and uh, didn't get the snap quick enough to, to hand it off to the receiver. So we were behind the chains right <clears> off the bat, 19-yard loss. It was second down and 29 and we had to punt the football. Valley took it at the 41-yard uh, line, and they stood for a field goal at that point. And, and you look at Fernandez, Orlando Fernandez, he had a kick made of 40, a kick made of 50, and a very tough win. To me, there's no question that all Valley had was four field goals. There's no doubt that he's the best field goal kicker to me in the conference so far. Now, he got a great day from each other uh, at that point with the wind was blowing. Uh, that's always difficult for kickers uh, during the course of uh, when the wind is blowing like that. He was kicking against the wind. He kicked with the wind. It didn't really matter. You know, he could cook, he could kick sideways and made them all, Charles. But he was a he was a dynamic kicker for him, and, and he's still gonna do some great things for Valley in the kicking game. He missed a 42-yard mm -hmm. field goal as uh, Valley got to the 25-yard line. So you look at Jelani Eason. Uh, the quarterback there for Valley. And over the years, when you talk about Valley, just trying to find a healthy quarterback. Uh, Jelani Eason, what uh, what problems did he pose for you? He came out and played well. They didn't ask him to do too much. I think they relied on the running game to to, to be established, and that's what they did. Uh, he made some good throws to some, to some receivers. Um, he just managed the game. I think that's what uh, Coach Daz is really built on as far as his team. Um, offense just managed the game, and defense will win it for him and, um, in that case. But, um, you know, the quarterback, he, he played he play solid, uh, did the things they asked him to do. When you talk about the quarterback <clears throat> position, Coach, we all know quarterbacks love to be the star and, and all of that, but sometimes you get situations where you – may not necessarily win the game, but just don't lose the game. And I think, you know, some sometimes that happens. Just manage the game. That that's all you have to do. Don't ask you know, don't be a hero. Just manage the game. Hand the ball off. Don't make the, the difficult throws, you know, the dinks and dunks, the check downs. I think with Easton and, and that offense it's just a matter of, of just not making a mistake. That's exactly right. And that's where they play, Charles, you know, just 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 manage the game. And uh, I think he did that. Uh, to some sense, to, uh, you know, like I said, we got in the, got in the red zone. Uh, I, th I think a defense stood up and, and made the plays they had to make. So uh, that was the difference in the ball game. 
Braves got the football on their second drive with 11.08 left and put a nice drive together, Coach. We're behind the chains, though, third and 10. Uh, incomplete pass to Bowler. Then there was a penalty that, that helped us out at the 35-yard line. We're able to push the ball down the field. Uh, Felix Harper, a 21-yard run, so a mixture of run and pass. And then we got to a third and goal from Valley's 15-yard line. And... Felix Harper hit Charles Pringle for 15 yards, capping off a 17-play, 75-yard drive. Talk about that. You know, we sustain drives, and when you're doing that, you, you're always converting on third down or you're getting first down. So, uh, you know, 17 plays is, is, is not the normal um, you want to have. Uh, you like those drives to kind of end the ball game, Charles, but but during the course of a ball game, uh, you want to sustain drives and keep a drive going. But 17 plays, you know, eating up a lot of clock, and um, but you want to try and score as quickly as you can, and that means you have explosive plays during the course of 17 plays, or uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of that to um, to to minimize those plays. Uh, I think we end up with the game with like 66 uh, total plays, offensive plays, uh, during the course of the game. So uh, you want to. You like those drives, but you want to try to score with explosive plays before that. So, um, but we did good there, uh, just that drive and, and be able to put some points on the board. And we led seven to nothing at that point. That was the score at the end of the first quarter. Uh, so, talk about that first quarter. We had the big negative play to start, the 19-yard uh, loss, but we were able to score the second time we had the football. Seven nothing at the end of the first 15 minutes. Your thoughts there? Yeah, the biggest thing is you don't have negative plays, Charles. And when you don't have negative plays, you can sustain drives uh, during the course of a of a game. And I think that's what happened the second drive that we got the ball. Uh, we kind of kind of relaxed a little bit and, and got in the got in the mixed up the game to where we can sustain drives and, and drive at 17 plays to score a touchdown. And we've had that. We've done that four-minute offense in which we've been able to ground and pound. The Grambling game was a classic example uh, two weeks ago. And you know, a long drive here, 17 plays, 75 yards, 7 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Let's go to the fall lines. And you know what that means. Our first caller of the night, as usual, our main man, Marquise, joining us. Mm -hmm. Good evening, man. How you doing? How you doing, Charles? Good evening. How you doing? Uh, hey, Coach Wade. What's up, Marquise? Yeah, uh, congratulations to your win. Uh, thank you, brother. Y'all four and two. Right? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so I wish, I wish, yeah, I wish, yeah, I wish, uh, let's make it five and two. That's right. That's our intention, Mark. He's in preparation of this week. That's our intention to go to Texas Southern and, and make it five and two. Yeah, uh huh. I heard Jack, Jack Space, they five and one. Yeah, they got a, they got a record, five one record. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I hope. Yeah, yeah, they 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 the better. I think the Jack Spade they got better. So we appreciate that, Marquise. We appreciate you calling in. All right. Thank you, Marquise. We appreciate it. And that sends us to a timeout. We'll be back after this second quarter recap. A lot to unpack here as this is the first of four straight on the road. We go to Texas Southern. We go to Southern. The Jaguars bounce back. And then we go to Bethune-Cookman. Right now, you're at a point, if you're a team in the conference, you're in one or two categories. You're either a contender or a spoiler. And either one of those are tough. And that's what we're going to be dealing with the rest of the way. I think we kind of all expected this, especially with uh, FAMU and Bethune coming in. Things are getting interesting in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this on the Brave Sports Network. <laughs> I surrender. I surrender. All right, pal. Hey, Dad. We have a gun. What's up? We have a gun. Why do you ask that, kiddo? Can I play with it? No, absolutely not. It's not a toy. You know that. Anyway, I need it to protect you, your sister and mom. But what about the eight kids who get shot every day by mistake? Where'd you hear that? Where do you keep it? <laughs> it's hidden. I bet it's on the top shelf of the closet, under your sweatshirts. Is it loaded? Remember when I found my Christmas gift? You always told me to be curious. No. No, that's not what I meant. And when it's just me and mom, I could use the gun to protect her. No, Justin, I promise I'm always here for you but dad you're not always here
to the Fred McNair program, give us a call, 601-877-6595. You can text a question, 601-348-7254. And I'm on Twitter, Tall Man Radio. We have text and tweets that we will get to in just a bit. All right, so, Coach, let's look at this uh, second quarter. It was 7 nothing at the end of the first quarter. Valley got on the board on a Fernandez 41-yard field goal to make it a 7-3. to And then Felix Harper, a 28-yard run, capping off an 82-yard drive, so that keeps the theme going are two touchdown drives 75 and 82 yards talk about the uh, touchdown run by harper to put the braves up 14 to 3 that was a great job by him uh, getting outside and, and seeing what he needs to see and, and and just eluding tackles and, and and running for a touchdown i think he did a great job another 14 play drive uh charge you know uh had that one explosive play with the 20-yard run by him. You know, that's the thing that we're looking for uh, prior to 14 plays. If we can get it in before the end, uh, that means we're scoring touchdowns and stuff like that, Charles. So um, anytime you're having a length of drive like that, you're eating up a lot of clock. You talk about explosive plays. The way we're looking at teams in the conference now, and I think we can safely say that every team in this conference is getting better. You know, we love to see points. What Alabama A&M has been doing for a bit of three seasons, going back to two years ago and then in the spring and the fall, they've seemed to have tailed off a little bit. Are we seeing a little lesser offense in this league across the board, or are we seeing better defense in this league right now? Just a little bit of both, Charles. I think that in, in this league now you have you have a lot of teams that, that they're going to have explosive plays, and, and like I said, a lot of teams are tapering off. Uh, a lot of teams were relying on defense now, um, you know, to make plays and and offense just to manage the game. So anytime you get an offense that can that can get explosive plays, that's a quality plus for for the team in terms of what they're doing on defense. And a lot of teams are relying on a lot of defense. Um, you know, we got a good stout defense, Charles, and uh, but we try to make explosive plays at the same time. But you know, like I said, those other teams have defense as well. So we have to we have to compete with that, and um, but everybody in this league has gotten a, gotten a whole lot better through the course of uh, of the years, Charles. Uh, you talk about two teams that's just coming in the swag, with Bethune Cookman and FAMU, um, very good coaches, uh, very good football programs um, that, uh, that that comes into this swag conference uh, with a lot of intention. So you know uh, the biggest thing is that that each and every week that as all core f- football program. We go out and compete and put the best product on the field to, to compete with those teams. And definitely that's been the case you know, in this game especially. We're up 14-3, to three and then Valley comes back with a field goal to make it 14-6. to six. Bend but not break Coach McNair on defense. Holding a Valley team that can score some points to just four field goals. So what, what impressed you the most about your team's defense? Bend but not break. I mean, they, they, they rally around the football charge. And they, they like I told them uh, this morning during the course of uh, – uh, the, the, the meeting this morning, you know, you know, from the 20 to 20, um, we, we give up a lot. And that we, they have to change during the course of the game. Uh, we have to stop the run, not give up the big plays on, on defense. And uh, getting the red zone, we do fine. I mean, we just have to just make sure that maybe every once in a while, let's block one of those field goals. And, <laughs> and let's keep the score down a little bit. But they're doing a great job, Charles. Coach Thornton and that group of guys over that side of the ball uh, have been tough all year. So, um Hope to continue to play well as they're playing, and, and they're going to only get better, Charles. So uh, the best is yet to come with the old guys on the defense side of the ball. So we're looking for better things at the defense side. It was 14-6 to six at the half. So, Coach, your thoughts through the first 30 minutes. I mean, holding Valley to a couple of field goals, two long drives. I kind of expected a medium to lower scoring game. That was kind of my prediction, maybe, you know, 24-16 to 16 or something like that. And it was turning 24-12. to 12. But this is kind of what I expected through the first 30 minutes. You know, a lot of times, you know, as a field of a head coach, you can kind of feel how the game, the flow of the game going to go. And, um, and just coming out for pregame and, and things like that. And I told the team this morning, you know, I just didn't didn't feel the confidence that that, that we needed uh, to be explosive as far as what we could do as far as a team during the course of this game. And uh, just the sense of that, that my feeling, I know it was going to be a tough game. I knew Valor was going to bring it uh, to us, and uh, we just had to make sure we was kind of had to counteract what they was going to bring. And I think we did a good job of, of doing that uh, through the course of the ball game. But 
I think that we just have to get a little bit better coming out with a little more energy uh, to get this thing flowing the right way. Have you been able to put your finger on that is the reason why. I mean, against Grambling, we started fast and then just kind of mellowed out. Against Valley, a couple of long drives, but just couldn't, you know, finish it. You know, just get four quarters of football, what, what Coach Radden was saying in practice the other day. I'm sure all of all of you all are saying this kind of the same thing. Have you been able to, you know, identify and uh, kind of single that out in terms of what, what's going on with that? You know, I kind of like I use different tactics, Charles, and what I what I'm a, as a coach try to approach the game and, and approach the young men uh, during the course of practice in terms of uh, how we're going to get things done, uh, uh, how I'm going to talk to them, uh, you know, whether I'm going to uh, be hard on them or be critical on those guys during the course of practice and in the course of the game. But uh, sometimes I have to change up a little bit. Uh, I even thought about the uniforms, dress code, and all that kind of stuff, Charles. It, it is something about the, the uniform we're wearing or, or some of that. Nature. I'm a very superstitious person, Charles, and when it comes down to stuff like that, I want to keep everything just about the same, my routine the same during the course of the week. Um, but, you know, just something that uh, I think that we have to just make sure that we're doing the right thing as coaches to make sure the young men are ready to play on Saturday. We'll take a break here. We'll be back with the third quarter and fourth quarter recap coming up here. Some interesting uh, dynamics in the second half, including a spot a situation that uh, drew a lot of attention uh, on a particular spot and some other stuff here in the second half of this game. So we'll get to it. Your questions, your comments, your text and tweets, all of that coming up We're here on the Fred McNair program. We'll get to that after this. It's been difficult because I hadn't been able to see my grandchildren. I can't wait to get back to field trips with my school. Not having to think about putting on a mask. I really can't wait to get back to life, really. I miss all my friends. I miss taking pictures in school. An expression on someone's face when you do something nice for them. COVID-19 vaccines are available, and they're the first step to safely getting back to things we miss most. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision about COVID-19 vaccines. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back. And change I could go back and change it all. If I could go back. I would. But I can't. Welcome back to the Fred McNair program. The Braves are the number three team in the box to row poll behind Jackson State and Prairie View. There are seven SWAC teams in the top ten in the box to row poll. So the SWAC doing some good things, getting the attention uh, from the box to row group. And I'm a, I'm a voter and uh, tell you what, the, the SWAC's doing some good stuff. So we'll talk about that as we roll along. Let's talk about this third quarter, Coach. Uh, Mississippi Valley to start the second half. Got the football at the 29-yard uh, line, and they had to settle for a fourth and two at the Valley 37. You talk about your defense getting off the field there, Coach. Uh, Coach Dancy went for it from, at his own 37-yard line on fourth down and two. Did that surprise you? No, it did not. No, it didn't, Charles. Uh, I mean, you know, the way he's thinking about his defense and uh, and things of that nature, I wasn't surprised about that at all. Uh, but I'm glad that our defense made a stand and and uh, made a stop right there. So uh, they, did a, they did an outstanding job of, of making a stop on that fourth down. Uh, Wise and Kinsler in on the stop. Let's talk about Valley's running game. Caleb Johnson, we previewed him last week about 5'9", about 205. He was definitely a slippery customer. Yeah, he's a solid runner, Charles, and that's what he did during the course of the game. He ran the ball uh, very well uh, during the course of the ball game and, and really kept him in the, in the game as far as running uh, the football, Charles. So he did an outstanding job there running the football. Brace got it with 13.01 left in the third quarter. Got it at Valley's 38-yard line. A second and three, Nico Duffy for seven yards. A second and ten, uh, Juan Anthony, a six-yard uh, rush there. Then on third and four, uh, Nico Duffy with, with a first down run there. And then we, we got the football in the red zone and had to settle for a field goal, a nine-play, 32-yard drive. Uh, I'm sure you would have loved to have uh, kind of punched that one in. Yeah, that's one of those one charges that you have to punch in. Uh, you get the ball on this side of the field of the 50 uh, on the 32-yard line, and 
and uh, that's the one you need to punch in for a touchdown. But was unable to do that, and um, a good thing we had a good kicker there uh, in Noah uh, to make a 24-yard field goal. Yep, and that uh, put the Braves up 17-6. to As we fast forward to the third quarter, 7.05 left. Valley got the ball at the 20-yard line, and they got to the Braves 33. Another field goal uh, by Fernandez. This one for 50 yards into the win, Coach McNair. You don't see many 50-yarders made in this conference, but he had a lot of height and a tough win, was able to knock that one through. Uh, when he left his foot, Charles, I knew it was good. Uh, anyway, he hit it solid. Um, and I knew it was good when he left his foot. So uh, he's a solid kicker. And, I mean, I'm quite sure he got player of the week, uh, special team player of the week this week. I, I'm not sure, but I think he did. It was 17-9 at that point. Then we got the ball with 350 left in the third quarter at our own 25-yard line. We picked up a first down, and then the, the offense kind of bogged down. Coach, a couple of sacks. Felix Harper sacked twice for three yards, a three-yard loss, so we were behind the chains, third and 16. Talk about that little sequence there. As Valley had a little momentum, got some points. They were within a score. They did two ill-advised sack there, Charles. I, mean, I think he's got to get rid of football. I think we had a wide open receiver on one of them. Um, you know, they just step up and just hit him with it. So we missed that opportunity, and he got sacked on that one. Uh, but, you know, he knows he's got to get rid of the football. We don't take sacks. Uh, that's one thing that uh, Coach Gray um, coaches about every day, you know, being able to get rid of the football to a check down or either throw it away and not take sacks. So uh, he took two sacks there back-to-back. How would you assess his play in terms of when the pocket collapses, when things break down, throw it away, live to see another down, just those type of decisions? How would you assess that so far? Well, they haven't been good decisions uh, right now, Charles, and uh, he's still working on some of the things that he needs to do uh, to get there. Um, and Coach Grace continued to harp on him about it and, and make sure he understand uh, the process of, of getting rid of football and, and not taking sacks and putting us behind the chain. So uh, we're going to continue to uh, make progress towards that uh, to where we can get that done a whole lot better uh, than what he's doing. Valley added a field goal late, and here we are, Coach, 17-9 to going into the fourth quarter. Was, when I was thinking about the end of the third quarter, I was thinking about on that same field a couple of weeks earlier against uh, North Carolina Central. It's kind of almost the same score, and then Valley found a way to win it in the fourth quarter. So, I mean, for Valley, my thinking was if they just keep it close, just keep themselves in it, uh, you know, who knows? But And that's exactly what happened. And that's the thing, and I can tell you about the defense. I mean, that's what that's what Coach Dancing really rely on, uh, just keeping it close. Uh, anything can happen, especially when you when your offense is having to have the the long drives, uh, charge 17, 14 play drives. Anything can happen during the course of those drives, and I think that's what uh, teams are trying to do: just make us uh, make those long drives and make mistakes. And uh, I think the that me and Coach Ratton and offense talked about that uh, in terms of what they're trying to do and what they're allowing us to do, um, make their long drives and let us make a mistake, and they capitalize on those mistakes. Let's go back to the phone line, 601-877-6595. Virgil checking in here on this Monday night on the Fred McNair program. Good evening, Virgil. How are you? Hey, good evening, Charles. How you doing? And, Coach, how are you doing as well? Oh, we're doing good right now, man. Just trying to make preparation for this, for this trip to uh, Texas and – Take on Texas Southern now. Oh, Coach, we'll be fine. Coach, and a great job this weekend. I just want to let you know that. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate uh, it. Coach, I have a question for you. Huh? Okay, that quarterback we have out of Memphis, uh, are we going to put him into the rotation to kind of see, kind of showcase his talents a little bit in our next games coming up? Well, it just depends on how well you know um, how well Felix play and and things of that nature. I think if he if he's doing well and we have to just wait to another game, you know, unless it's something that's occurred that we can just put him in, and uh, in some cases where he need to play. Um, but right now, I think Felix is is he's still coming around to where we need him in terms of the quarterback play, and um, we're just gonna hold that. And like I said, I'm always I'm always thinking about that number two guy, you know. He got to be ready when it's time for his number to call. He needs to be ready. So um, undoubtedly, Coach Gray is doing a great job with those guys, uh, getting them prepared for game day situation. Yeah, Coach, and I'm originally from the Mississippi Delta area, and I've seen this guy play, 
and he is good. I mean, he is good, honestly. Yes, we're, we're, we're watching. That's why we got him here. That's why we got him here. That's why we found out that, that he was in the portal. We, we reached out to him quickly and uh, made sure that wasn't nobody else going to snatch him. So uh, he's doing some great stuff in practice and, and uh, making sure he's making preparation to be, be there when we need him. So um, as long as he's doing the right thing, making progression in practice and, and doing all kinds of things, and he got a, he got a great chance of uh, being successful in this football program. Okay, well, I appreciate it, Coach, and appreciate it too, Charles. Thank you very much. Thank you for the call. Yes, sir. All right, we're going to take a time out here as we approach the bottom of the hour. We'll take a break. Second half of the Fred McNair program on the Braves Sports Network coming up after this. It's not just the ships, the armor, or the aircraft. It's something more. It's the will to fight and determination to win found inside each and every Marine that answers a nation's call. Battles won. Whether it's advice on managing your anxiety or tools to help you stay grounded, Coping 19 provides a range of resources and self-care tips to help you cope with this pandemic. We can help. Find the resources that work best for you at coping-19.org. On the Braves Sports Network, glad you can uh, join us. However, way you might be checking us out, either via online on the radio or on social media, Facebook Live. My first uh, venture into the whole Facebook Live thing. And uh, Cedric Tillman, our producer on the video side of the house. Jamario Brooks, our producer on the radio side of the house, taking all the calls. We appreciate Marquise and Virgil calling in. And you could join the conversation as well. Coaches, before we get into the fourth quarter, and I don't want to forget this, and I want to wish a special congratulations to our women's cross-country team as they won the SWAC championship in Clinton and that uh, that's huge I know you support all the sports and uh, just congratulations to coach uh, Joseph and the job that he's done with those young ladies bringing home the gold you're exactly right Charles and I think he's done an outstanding job uh, working with those young men and women in the cross country and, uh, and in track and field as well um, get a chance to talk to him every morning uh, when he come to work we always speak to each other uh, even the track players they they i'm sitting outside getting ready for practice as, as they come in for weight training and stuff like that um it's just amazing how these uh the young men and women just grabs to to coaches and uh, and just communicate you know it's it's, it's a big thing uh communication i think coach joseph has done an outstanding job uh, with his track program uh, to get it where it needs to be and come in and win the win across country today uh something special for them and uh some of these young men and women's going to church for the rest of their lives so the experience they had here winning championships Congratulations to Coach Joseph. We'll uh, be talking with him in the next week or so, and he'll talk about that special moment. Well, it was a special fourth quarter, Coach, as we look at it, 17-9. to Going into the fourth quarter, uh, as Fernandez with another field goal of 35 yards. And things got interesting, Coach. We got the ball with 11 and a half minutes left. We got it at our 35. Then it was a fourth down and one at our 44. As on a third and one, Stafford Anderson for no gain. Then fourth down, Coach. Coach, uh, the spot. Talk a little bit about that because there's a lot of conversation about it. Cedric Tillman was right there by the chains, and we were trying to wonder what in the heck. How did all that go down? <laughs> I, I have no clue, uh, Charles, but the explanation was he he landed before he got to the sticks, and I I, I, I clearly see him go over the, <laughs> go over the sticks <laughs> with the ball in his hand. So um, I called a timeout just to check and see, but at that time the instant replay it went out, so. Uh, we didn't get a chance to look at it on this replay for the spot. Uh, so I asked for a measurement, and we were just only uh, just a nose of football short, Charles. And uh, and I thought that we had got the first down on that fourth down and, and won there, Charles. And um, honestly, I, I thought that we had got that first down. Obvious. Were you thinking about going for it? Yes, I, that's what, it was no doubt. It was no brainer. It was no brainer. Uh, I trust my guys. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing is that up front uh, we had uh, – 
from the center to the to the tackle. Uh, those guys are, are basically freshmen. Uh, Darius Smith is a, his first year, just making his fourth start uh, in, in, into a game. You know, so um, he's done a great job of, uh, of being the quarterback on the line. And uh, the other two guys, um, Braxton and T.J. Yarbert on the, the guard and the tucker spot. Those are true freshmen. TJ is a JUCO kid. Uh, but, you know, you think about that, um, still a freshman here at Alcorn. Um, but, um, you know, did an outstanding job. And they're just trusting those guys to get one yard, and which I thought they did. And um, we just didn't get it. Um, but um, anytime it's that close and I feel good about what we're doing on, on offense, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I go for it. Just give those guys confidence too, Charles, that they, that they can go for it on fourth down. And, um, you know, just that. You know, we we strive for perfection, and that's what we try to be, um, you know, with this offense. We did punt the ball, and Clayton, an 18-yard return. So uh, Valley got the football with 921 left at the 32-yard line. They had to punt. So in the last 10, 12 minutes, it was a field position game. You know, one score game, it's about field position. It's about trying to flip the field, trying to back the other team up. That's what it was about the last 11 minutes. Big chess match. Big chess match. You know, just to, who's going to get the ball in better field position, Charles, to, to break the ice. And uh, and I think that we got the ball back, and uh, I think that's what we did. We broke the ice on it. So we got the football, Coach, at our 20-yard line with eight minutes left in the game. We had a second and eighth and a third and five. Felix Harper, 14-yard rush. Then Nico Duffy, a 20-yard run and a 16-yard run. And then that 16-yard run was for a touchdown, and that capped off a 80-yard drive in seven plays, and that took up 420. How special of a drive was that, and, and what impressed you about it? That was a great drive, Charles, and that's what we look for, you know, just to just to go up 12 points there. You know, that was a big deal for us to, to get a touchdown out of that drive and not a field goal. Um, uh, you get a field goal, you're only down, they're only down by eight. So that was big for us to go up with that touchdown with Nico Duffy run. But that was a special drive, eight time off the clock as well. Uh, then you're going to put it in the box at the end. The Braves did go up 24 to 12, and then the defense, obviously, coach, as Valley got it uh, for the final time with three and a half minutes left, got to their 31, and the defense closed the door. And they had the turnover against Grambling, and they got off the field in this game. So the defense, you know, shut it down in the fourth quarter of the last two weeks. Did a great outstanding job. They was uh, they were three for 14 on third down conversion, so that was big for the defense. Um, 0 for 3 on 4th down, so, you know, that, that's, that's big. Anytime you're going for it on 4th down, you can stop on that. You're doing a good job, Charles, and I think they they still hold the mentality, you know, Bama don't break, and they just, they just playing a whole lot better um, in, in some spots that we need to meet to make, need to make some improvement in, and, and that's what Coach Thornton is trying to do, to get this team better as we get prepared for Texas Southern. The Braves win 24-12. to These games are never easy. They're nail biters. They come down to the final possession as a play or two, a play here, a play there. Could change the direction of any of these games. And hey, 24 to 12, it was 17 to 12 at one point in the fourth quarter. And how about Valley with it was 17 to 12 in the fourth? They got inside the five, but then were called back due to a hold on the edge. They had to settle for a field goal there. That was maybe the biggest play of the game because they had it first and goal, and then a receiver held on that edge. Pushed them back there, settled for a field goal. That was huge. That was huge, Charles. That was huge. Uh, you know, uh, you know, just for us to be in that position and to, to kind of hold up and uh, get them pushed back for a holding penalty. You know, that's that's always big. Uh, defense, just like I said, they 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 was playing hard. They strained themselves in every bit. So. Uh, uh, he did a great job of uh, holding up right there. The Braves win by the final score of 24 to 12. As we take a break here, when we come back, we'll go inside the numbers. We'll break it down, get to your text and tweets as well. We'll take a time out. We'll be right back. When I think of Alcorn, I think of family. I would encourage troopers to come to Alcorn because if you're looking for a great way to connect with people, to also um, get your degree, and also to um, enjoy college, I would definitely choose Alcorn. If they made the choice to come to Alcorn, they wouldn't regret it. You would just meet so many great people that would have a lasting impression on your life and the teachers and everything. It's just a family and it's a great family to be a part of because once you're part of the Brave Nation, you just can't forget it, can't let it go. Be brave, go further. We are all corn. Choose to be brave. Choose all corn. All corn proud, brave strong. All corn is where you belong.
program here on the Braves Sports Network. Glad you can join us. However way you might be checking us out, watching and or listening, our producers, Cedric Tillman and Jamario Brooks, head coach Fred McNair, Charles Edmond, glad you can join us. All right, coach, let's uh, look at this game. Let's talk a little bit about the offense. You know, people are people are kind of talking about the offense a little bit in terms of we start fast, we do good things, then we bog down, we slow down, we back up, we make big plays, and then we bog down again. How would you assess or are you concerned? And this has been kind of a weekly question now, maybe be a broken record, but are you concerned <laughs> about this offense not pushing fast, fast, faster? I know you're trying to do that. Then you look at Grambling, you know, it was 24, 20, and then here and it was uh, 24 to 12. And I was talking with Stafford Anderson. He said, we, we've been leaving a lot of money on the field, which means a lot of points on the field. Are you concerned about the offense? Not really concerned about the offense. I'm just concerned about more of the execution part, uh, Charles, and what, we, what we're what not doing uh, correctly uh, in those terms. Uh, you know, I think the offense is going is going, is going to get better. And, uh, you know, what we're doing is is playing ball and, and – um, and not having the, the execution part the way we should in the floor of a game, uh, every now and then you're going to get bogged down. And that's the nature of a football game. You're going to have defense over there that's going to give you something different. Uh, they bring to the table, they're going to do something different. Like I said, you know, the other team have coaches too. They watch as much as film as we do. Uh, but we are always trying to figure out some other things, to some other option to, to not get that way. And um, we, in terms of that, you know, doing our scouting report and trying to figure out uh, what 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 the other team is going to do to us? Uh, you know, in, in terms of slowing us down, what can hinder us uh, from making the big plays? So we're still trying to work through some things uh, with the offense, and I think it's coming along uh, fairly well in terms of what we're trying to do. Felix Harper, 15 of 25, 145. There have been some receivers open trying to hit him, trying to get it to him to really push this offense to another gear. When he misses those receivers, you look at it on film, missing high, missing low. Is it pressure, just not settling in the pocket, happy feet? What do you uh, attest that to? It's all, it's all about being accurate in, in what you do. You see him every day in practice making those throws, and, and uh, a lot of time you get you get uh, excited. Sometimes when you're playing quarterback, you see him wide open receiver, and not making that throw is no excuse, you know, but we have to be able to make those excuses. When you talk about leaving something on the field, that's what you're leaving on the field. You're leaving points. You're leaving yards uh, and, and and that stuff. So you you got to get better at doing things of that nature um, and being a, being a better player. Uh, quarterback in the pocket as well you know um, just making those throws that you have to make that's part of it he was 15 of 25 145 sacked three times how would you assess the offensive line play well i thought they played uh, pretty good charles at the time you look at the film and you see he got good pockets great pockets and uh and the two times that he got sacked in a row well basically felix fault uh for not holding the ball long and not getting his eye where it need to be uh to make a completion um i know the one to he could have threw the ball to to manny jones and he could have probably broke it uh, up the middle uh if he threw it to him but that kind of stuff that, that um that he needs to get better at uh, in terms of where his eyes need to be when the ball is in his hand one thing the offensive line is doing creating running lanes for the running game Led by Nico Duffy, 138 yards the last two games, if I'm not mistaken, almost 270 yards rushing the last couple of games. Uh, so, you know, Nico Duffy getting the, the bulk of the work right now. He's doing a great job, uh, Charles, even in pass protection. He does a wonderful job uh, to protect the quarterback in pass protection. So, um, being able to run between the tackles, uh, he, like I said, he done gained about three pounds from last year. So he's doing a good job of, uh, of getting in the creases. And, and I feel that line is doing an excellent job of opening up the gap for him, too, Charles. And, and that's what you need to, 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 to run those yardage. You, know, you have to have somebody in those trenches doing the work for you. And it's up to him where his eyes go when he gets the ball and, and how he creates the running lanes. And that's all up on him. But, you know, he's been doing a great, solid job throughout this whole, uh, whole year, Charles. In the receiving category, with Charles Pringle, 6 for 55, Bowler 2 for 41. Not many opportunities for a bowler in this game. Well, I think that, you know, everybody's, is, is, since the Bowler had the big games, you know, he against Pine Bluff and everybody's kind of watching him and, and rotating the coverage to him a lot. And uh, and I think that number 11 that uh, Valley had was a pretty decent DB. Um, uh, I think the pass he caught, he caught on number 21. Uh, but number 11 was a pretty solid guy. I mean, he could play. Uh, good cover guy. So, um, you know, those things are the, the matchup and players and stuff like that. It kind of lose you away from them sometimes. And, uh, and like I said, just a matter where 
um, the progression of the reads takes Felix to throw the ball. You know, a lot of time is that's determined who catches the ball. And then Juan Anthony, coach, just a couple of receptions. Is that the same case with him? Teams are really identifying him as well as Bowler to kind of shut them down a little bit. Is that the same case? Well, you know, you, you, when you got a bunch of receivers that, that, that plays um, – during the course of a game, I think we play just about eight receivers in the course of a game. And you kind of, if you're a defense, you're kind of trying to identify those guys that can make the plays and the guys that's going to that's gonna be open a lot of times. And I think sometimes, uh, and all the times too, you know, it's just where Felix, the, the progress in the read takes him a lot of times when, when you target a lot uh, during the course of a game. On the defensive side, Coach, you, you look at that fact, just four field goals and leading the way is Solomon Wise with seven, uh, Blout with six tackles, as well as Jawan Taylor with six, Ja'Cory and Wren with five. Overall, how would you assess the defense? A couple of sacks, kind of harassing Valley's quarterback, kind of shutting them down and getting off the field when we have to. You know, the, the biggest thing is, Charles, they, they're playing hard. They're playing extremely hard. Uh, now, we talked this morning and during the course of the team meetings, and we just have to control our gaps. Uh, you know, we, we all over the place in the up front, you know. Uh, that's meaning they have stopped the run. Uh, they ran for 123 yards. The running back did, Caleb did. And um, just got to be able to slow that down a little bit and uh, make sure we got our gaps control and, and doing those things. So uh, thanks to defense, they strained themselves. They, they're really playing hard uh, in that sense. So um, they're going to continue to do that. Coach Thornton is going to keep his thumbs on them and, and make them work. And speaking of work, special teams have been working, obviously, in the PAT department. I want to ask you about the kickoffs and fair catch and <clears throat> versus running balls out on kickoffs. So the, what's your philosophy? I'm sure you look at a lot of film on that with the fair catch versus the return game. What's what's the, the cat and mouse or the strategy there? A lot of times when you're kicking the ball off, Charles, it depends on the height of the ball and where it's going to land. Um, if it's, if it's going to land – on the two-yard line, it's probably better to fair catch it. You, know, you get on the 25 in terms of guys coming down full speed and you get tackled inside the, the 15 and stuff of that nature. And it depends on whether the returner have to run back to get it. If you got to run back to get it, of course, we're going to fair catch it because running back and then coming forward, you're going to lose uh, probably about 10 yards in terms of that. And a lot of times when we talk about the sky kick, it depends on uh, the return and the way we kick the ball is predicated on our coverage uh, when we're running down the field. So um, a lot of time it's just about strategic stuff and, and trying to make sure that we're getting the best out of what we can get. We'll take a break right here. When we come back, we'll get to the text and tweets, and we'll preview Texas Southern at Compass Stadium. It's a night game. It's the late game. It's 7 o'clock. Back-to-back weeks, we've got the late game. Southern next week at 6 o'clock. That's the last game of the night. Next week, we've got the late game this Saturday against Texas Southern. We'll take a break. We'll be right back after this. COVID-19 has changed how we stomp the yard and feel the beat. How we stroll. How we step. How we show our pride. Now it's time to take the first step that lets us get back to strolling instead of scrolling. Before we can safely come together, we need the facts. As COVID-19 vaccines become available, you may have questions. Is it safe? Should I get it? Is it free? It's okay to have questions. Now get the facts about COVID-19 vaccines at GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision for yourself and for your family. Uh, the uh, text and tweets have come in. Just some notes I came up with, Coach Manny Flash Jones. Uh, not not many targets. Is that kind of the same thing? Well, yeah, like I said, he missed him on one uh, charge. That one he got sacked on. If he threw that ball there to Manning, uh, man, it may break it and, and get a first down right there. So uh, those two sack back to back. Uh, like I said, you know, he just just missed his reads. Uh, that's one thing that we talked about during the course of the week um, on, on yesterday is, is him getting back to getting his getting his reading and progression down. And in Leatherwood uh, in the backfield, uh, a lot of folks were looking for more touches from him. 
talk about well, that. Well, well, he's a solid player, but I thought that what we had with one-two punch right there with uh, with um, Show and uh, and Nico, you know that I thought they did a great job for us in the running game and and uh, and pass protecting. So we kind of stuck with those guys and and rode them out through the rest of the game. All right, back to the phone lines here at 601-877-6595. Blake checking in here on this Monday night. Good evening, Blake. How are you? I'm doing good, Tyler, man. How you all doing, Coach? How you all doing? I'm doing good, Blake. Thanks, man. Uh, Coach, I just got a quick question. From watching the games and whatnot, uh, does it kind of seem like Felix is in his own head? Um, he, or either he's overthinking things or he's just trying to wait till the line develops. But from just watching from the TV, mm -hmm. and I know that's a whole different story, but it kind of seems like he's in his, in his own head or he's kind of overthinking things. Yeah, we, we sit down and we talk to Felix. Uh, me and Coach Gray and I uh, had talked to him one, one time, one Monday. Uh, actually, it was Monday last week. Um, we talked to him and see what his thought process was with everything and, and just making sure that we was giving him everything that he needed to be successful uh, and making sure that he wasn't in his own way, as you say, you know. So um, just 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 being himself and, and uh, that it was no issue with him um, in those terms, um, but just to, just to be able to talk to him one-on-one -on -one and get him to understand that, you know, he just got to make sure that he's doing everything to, to lead this team in, in the right way. Um, I think in terms of that. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you, Blake. Thank you for the call. Uh, Coach Kermit sends us a text. Coach, how would you identify our team? Our team, we used to play fast, but it seems like we've slowed it down a little bit to run more or less passing. Talk about that. Well, the biggest thing is the teams are teams are really adjusting what we're doing in terms of that in our tempo stuff. And now what they're doing now, they're doing a lot of movement up front. Um, on the on the on the snap of the ball and or during the pre snap they're doing a lot of movement up front to give us a different look before the ball snap. And so what we're doing now we're doing a lot of checks, uh just to make sure they don't change things up and all that kind of stuff. So uh just to being able to identify what we need to identify uh with the line and all that kind of stuff. But you know, they're giving us some different stuff right now. Uh that's why we have to slow it down a little bit. In some cases we will go fast, you know, and uh in those in those situations. Oh, we appreciate that text. Another one, you talked about that uh, situation where it was a close to a first down and we punted. Uh, you talked about the replay. Did the replay actually go out altogether where they couldn't re they couldn't review it? It went out that play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I think I'm going to come back on, on, on the flip side of it. So uh, <laughs> I know it went out that play. But I was trying to figure out what happened from down to the next play. Okay. <laughs> um, another text, Coach. We ran the ball 51 times last week and 41 against Grambling. Is that the new offensive philosophy or lack of trust in the passing game? This is from DQ on the text line. No, nah, we trust the passing game, Charles. It's just that what they give us, and we're going we're gonna to take advantage of every opportunity we have to, to hand the ball off. Uh, I think what we're doing in terms of the offense is, is solid and what we've been doing in the past. I mean, we can't try to keep it balanced the most of the time, but it's going to be weighed out either with more pass or more run. just depends on what the team gives us, Charles. And, uh, you know, I think Coach Ratt is, is keeping it balanced to where we can uh, establish a run, and then we open up the passing game as well. So uh, I think the things that we're doing, we're doing uh, for the better of this program and for this football team uh, in terms of uh, run-pass options. Um, to, from the injury standpoint, Coach, from Mr. T, about our center, Milburn. What about his status? Well, I got a chance to talk to Milburn this morning again, and, uh, you know, he's work in progress, and um, he was going to see could he make a few steps this weekend during the course of practice, and that'll be a big plus for us to get him back. We missed Will Redder this past weekend, uh, our left guard, um, and also uh, Michael Moment. He's been out uh, nursing the injury, so our, our other tackle, um, so we've been kind of it's been kind of bouncing around with the offensive line uh, for a while. I think the right side is solidified to where you got Wanya Morris and uh, Columbus Willis there on the right side, which they had an excellent ball game on the right side. I just can't say enough about the left side because we kind of bounce people in and out on that left side of the line to kind of balance everything out. But for the most part, we did what we had to do to come out with a victory uh, against Mississippi Valley State. 
on the injury front, and I, I might have confused you through your curveball last week. We were talking about uh, the injury situation, and we we're talking about Stafford Anderson. I think I confused you a little bit with Terrence Edgeton. So let's clarify that because I got some calls and some questions about it last week. Terrence Edgeton is done for the year. Correct? Yes, Terrence Edgeton, he's out for the year. He's out for the year. He had knee surgery on um, Friday. Um, um, I think Friday morning he had knee surgery Friday morning, but he's out for the season. Um, and then basically that's probably about the only one that's going to be out for the season. Got some more guys banged up, uh, trying to get back uh, during the course of the next couple of weeks. Um, Alexis Smith uh, sends a tweet just talking about maybe uh, our tight ends, trying to use our tight ends more. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we got four tight ends, and uh, we kind of bounce around with all four of them right now. Uh, uh, Jeremiah Green, uh, Jeremy Brown, he's got the man called Truck Griffith. Um, and, you know, we're trying to make sure those guys uh, are doing, doing everything they can to get on the field. You know, that's the biggest thing, you know, uh, preparation during the course of practice. And you got Wes Danzig and uh, those guys, and uh, it's four of them. And so just trying to bounce around, just trying to plug those guys in. We don't play them all, but we play three of them. Uh, sometimes, so just to kind of get the right fit for those guys and, and the right combination of things that they can and what they cannot do during the course of practice is predicated on what they're going to do during the course of a game. How would you assess their blocking abilities? So well, we got a couple of them that, that, that really just could, that could block. Uh, you got one one guy that's going to be a little lighter. Uh, they catch the ball well, um, you know, and so in, that, those, in those scenarios. So we just got to make sure that those guys <laughs> that's, that's going to block well is in the game when it's time to block. And, and uh, it's this tough piece of puzzle because with the in and out, the rotation, um, of course, coaches are not really pinpointing that point to where, okay, we got to call this play, we got to call that play. We're just going to call a play, and hopefully those guys get that job done predicated on what they do in the course of practice. We'll take a timeout right here. We're going to turn our attention to Texas Southern University as we head to Houston, the Maroon Tigers, TSU. They beat Southern University. Then they lose to Grambling on Grambling's homecoming. We'll give you the standings as well. So lots to unpack, including how we're going to beat those TSU Tigers with a freshman quarterback we're going to be looking at on Saturday. We have questions. Fred McNair has answers. We'll get to it after this timeout. Um, can I get the now bar, please? One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. Texas just came in asking about Austin Bolton. Talk about him. Austin Bolton? Yes. Austin Bolton, is, is uh, he's been out for a while uh, with concussion protocols um, and, uh, and those things. He hadn't, he hadn't come back yet. I think he got a doctor appointment on uh, the 21st of this month uh, with a neurology uh, to, to access his, uh, his uh, concussion protocol uh, for right now. So hopefully um, I talked to his mom all the time last week and um she was supposed to give me a call on the 21st after he get through with his doctor appointment just kind of see where he at you know despite everything you know we've won some tough games we've had some tough games we're playing tough we're being tough but we're kind of banged up we are charles we are we are not uh, you know the coaches we noticed that uh, during the course of the week uh you know how many kids are on the sideline or, or we so-called in the tub uh, during the course of the week, and uh, we just balance some some things that we hopefully we're gonna be able to work through. And I think with our trainer coming in now, and he's gonna do a great job of of getting those guys back to playing surface, not being not being very easy on them, make sure they they do what they're supposed to do to get back to the playing surface in a matter of time. So uh, we all banged up a little bit across the board. Um, you know, we had a couple of guys that kind of got banged up a little bit on um, on Saturday. Because this is a physical ball game, Charles, and then, and we expect that sometime. But uh, we're gonna get back to 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 Alcorn Brand, get these guys healthy. So 
uh, we can make this long run here. And the second of four straight coming up Saturday at 7 o'clock at Compass Stadium against TSU. Let's look at Texas Southern, Coach. Uh, Texas Southern st- snapped an 18-game conference losing streak uh, when they beat Southern a couple of weeks ago. This team played Grambling tough for a half. You look at what they've done. Uh, they obviously lost to Prairie View 40-17. to They played a better fourth quarter against Rice. That kind of led to the win over Southern as they played more with more enthusiasm, a lot of energy. And they lost to Grambling 34-20. to So as you look at this team, Coach, we're going to be looking at a freshman quarterback in Andrew Body. A lot of people down there feel like he's the real deal. He was 16 of 25, 172 yards uh, in the game last week, 887 throwing the football. So, again, you look at two freshman quarterbacks. You look at Bowden, who we saw, and uh, you look at Eason, what we saw uh, on Saturday. Our passing defense coached the last two games, 18 of 51 passing. So that's good. So as we look at body and TSU, what do we expect here? Well, the biggest thing is, you know, he also the, the lead rush on the team as well, Charles. So we have to, we have to kind of – Balance that out with the passing and the rushing that he's going to do. So uh, he's a very solid quarterback. He throw the ball well, and and uh, he gonna, they going to get in 10 personnel and, and sling it around and run it as well. Uh, get in some 20 personnel and and, uh, and run the ball and, and throw it around the yard. You know, got some good receivers uh, in Davis. And um, I think three receivers already got 20 catches apiece, over 20 catches apiece. So uh, we got some guys we can look out for on the outside as well. Um, with body, he's gonna he's gonna do what he do, Charles. Um, he throw the ball well. I hope we can just kind of kind of bottle him up a little bit and rally him up as a freshman quarterback. And it's kind of tough now because some of these freshman quarterbacks come in ready to play, you know. And I think this is one of the guys that came in ready to play uh, as a freshman. Texas Southern actually outgained Grambling 362 to to 246 in their loss last week, and they had 117 yards rushing. All right, so as you look at the defense, Coach, they had three interceptions last week versus Grambling. Five sacks overall, a couple of sacks last week. So what do you see in TSU's defense? Well, the biggest thing is they they, they solid on defense. They got a big uh, – they're not big up front, but they're very active. Um, they're very athletic up front. Um, you know, the DBs on the back end, they're going to make some plays. Um, we just got to do something on offense to kind of get in the groove and get in the rhythm uh, to offset that or what they're going to try to present to us on defense. i tell you what, Coach, the second of four in a row. Yeah, take them one at a time. And you look at the standings. Prairie View 4-0, and we're 3-0, and Southern 2-1, and Grambling 2-2, two and two, Texas Southern 1-2, and two, and UAPB 1-2. and two. I said it earlier, you're either a contender or you're a spoiler. And both, it doesn't matter what category you fit. That's dangerous either way. And you're exactly right, Charles. And uh, hopefully, you know, like I said, I was telling the young man this morning in the course of the meeting, uh, we just got to make our mind up. We got to play better. Uh, we got to get ready for this run. And uh, we got a, a now a three-game road trip um, on, on, the, on the front end of us. And, and we just got to get ready to play on the road. Um, but, you know, like I said earlier, you know, our fans make us feel at, feel at home everywhere we go. So uh, hopefully that will continue with the support of the, of the wonderful fans that we have and, and come out and support us in Houston and uh, against a real good Texas Southern football team. It's another big weekend in the conference. Our game, the late game at 7. The other game, probably the game of the week in the conference, Prairie View, a game of the week, I would say, in the West, Prairie View at Southern. It's a 6 o'clock kickoff from Mumford. We are at 7, so we'll be able to follow all of that. You can follow the Braves, of course, on Saturday night from Compass Stadium. Pre-game at 6.30. We'll talk with Larry chatterbox Hale, the TSU Sports Network. At the half, uh, some good uh, halftime stuff. Cyrus Russ, the Interim Athletics Director at Alcorn, he'll join us on at the half of the game on Saturday. Coach, we appreciate it. Let's go get them, man. Thank you, Charles, and go Braves. Of course, Coach is always looking for that four-quarter game. Four quarters from start to finish. Fast start, fast ending. Hopefully we'll get that on Saturday at 7 o'clock from Compass Stadium as the Braves take on Texas Southern. That'll do it for the Fred McNair program. Glad you can join us here on the Braves Sports Network. For our producers, Cedric Tillman, Jamario Brooks, I'm Charles Edmond. We'll talk to you next Monday night. So long.